Hi, in this video I'll show you how to design this DC to DC boost converter. It takes an input footage of 24 volts and gives an output footage of 48 volts. The final circuit I designed works without a problem as shown. The switching frequency is 20 kHz and you can see the input is 24 volts and it gives a regulated output footage of about 48 volts. The regulation is plus or minus half a volt. For the oscilloscope, you can see when the voltage exceeds 48 volts, the IC output depicted by the blue waveform stops and when the voltage goes below 48 volts, it starts switching again to keep the output voltage about 48 volts. The output voltage is depicted by the red waveform. The green waveform is for the voltage across the timing capacitor and the purple waveform is for the current feedback. For the design specifications, you are given that the input footage is 24 volts, the output should be 48 volts. You also need to know the load, which can be in watts, resistance or amperes. We have 48 watts. The switching frequency is 20 kHz. It's usually from 20 to about 100 kHz. You also need to know the ripple voltage, either in percentage of the output footage or in actual volts. You can take the change in inductor current to be 20% of the average inductor current and assume an efficiency of about 100%. A simple DC to DC boost converter circuit looks as shown. You have your V input, an inductor, a fast diode, a switch, in this case a MOSFET, an output capacitor for filtering, and a load. The working is fairly simple. Initially, the MOSFET is off and the circuit is as shown, so the output will be V in minus the down drop. In the first case, the switch will be closed and so current flows from V in through the inductor and back to the negative supply through the switch. The inductor begins storing charge and the voltage across it is as shown. In the next stage, the switch now opens and because there is no current path to the negative rail through the switch, the voltage across the inductor will reverse and so it's in series with the input voltage. This will cause the diode to switch on because it's fan biased and the current flow through the diode will be used to change the output filtering capacitor and power any load connectors. On the third stage, the MOSFET turns on again, the diode turns off and the inductor begins storing charge again. Because the capacity 1 was charged, it will continue to provide power to run the load while the inductor is charging and the process repeats over and over again many times per second. The output footage is always greater than the input footage. The output footage is given by the formula V out is equals to V in or over 1 minus the duty cycle. The first step is to calculate the duty cycle. The duty cycle D is given by 1 minus V in or over V out. This is 1 minus 24 over 48 and this will give you a duty cycle of 0.5 or about 50%. Then you need to calculate the maximum load and the inductor current. Load is maximum when the output resistance is minimum. The load resistance is equal to the output resistance and it's given by the V out squared or over the output power. In this case, it's 48 squared or over 48 watts and it will give you 48 ohms. Because the efficiency is 100%, output power will be equal to input power. If it were not the case, Output power will be less than the input power due to losses, which are caused by MOSFET losses or switching losses and the down losses. The average inductor current is given by the output power or by the input footage times the percentage efficiency. So you have 48 watts divided by 24 volts multiplied by 100 or of 100 percent. This will give you an average inductor current of 2 amperes. The change in inductor current is 20% of 2 amperes and this is plus or minus 0.2 amperes. This is crucial for determining the current sensing resistance to protect the circuit from overcurrent. The next step is to calculate the critical inductance value or the minimum inductor to operate just on the boundary conduction mode. With this value, it will always ensure that the inductor current is always equal to or greater than zero. The minimum inductance value is given by duty cycle into 1 minus duty cycle squared multiplied by R 
out of two times the switching frequency. So this is 0 0.5 into 1 minus 0 0.5 squared times 48 ohms out of 2 times 20,000 multiplied by 10 to power 6 to give you the inductance in microhenries. This will give you 150 microhenries. This is the minimum inductance required. To ensure the circuit operates in the continuous conduction mode, the actual inductance should be more than the minimum inductance, ensure that it's at least 25% more, but usually it is set to about 10 times the minimum inductance for good operation. For 10 times, it should be 1500 microhenries. Then you need to calculate the output capacitor value or the minimum capacitance required to maintain the load and the desired output voltage ripple. The capacitance value is given by the duty cycle multiplied by the output voltage or over the voltage ripple multiplied by the output load resistance multiplied by the switching frequency. The output voltage ripple is the peak to peak change in the output voltage. So this will be equals to a duty of 0 0.5 times 48 volts or over 0 0.01 or 1% multiplied by 48 volts multiplied by 48 ohms multiplied by 48 volts times 20,000 all this into 10 to the power of 6 to give you the capacitance in microfarads and this will give you 52 microfarads so choose a capacitance value of at least 52 microfarads you should choose the next standard value of about 56 or more microfarads the next step is to choose a suitable IC you can just use an IC you have or choose the IC which meets the required specifications. In this case, I decided to go with the UC3842 because it simulates well. For a practical circuit, I recommend you use the UC3842 because it requires a lesser operating voltage. So this is the pinout of the UC3842. It can operate in high frequency without needing an dedicated gate drive IC. It has 8 pins as shown. For the UC3842, the output frequency is set by the formula 1.7 or over RT CT, where RT and CT are the timing, resistor and capacitor. From the datasheet, you can check the limits. Let's say I set the timing resistor to 10 kilo ohms, and with a frequency of 20 kilohertz, then you can calculate CT, which will be given by 1.72 or over RT times F multiplied by 10 to power 9 to give you the capacitance in nanofarads. In this case, it gives me 8.6 nanofarads. With these two values, you should get an operating frequency of at least 20 kHz. The next step is to calculate the values for the feedback resistors and for the overcurrent protection. For the feedback, it should look as shown. V out is 48 volts, R, A and R, B is the potential divider network and Vsense is the voltage feedback to the feedback pin of the IC. For the overcurrent protection, the series resistor R1 will detect the current flowing through the inductor and the MOSFETs, and through an RC filter made up of R2 and C1, it will provide a voltage feedback to the current sense pin of the IC. For the UC3842, the voltage feedback sense begins at 2.5 volts, and the current feedback voltage sense is set to about 1 volts. With this in mind, for the voltage feedback sense, the final output voltage feedback, RA or over RA plus RB multiplied by the output voltage should give you 2.5 volts. Vout is 48 volts. And substituting 48 volts for the Vout, you'll obtain that RB is approximately 19 times the value of RA. So if you set RA to 10 kilo ohms, then RB will be about 190 kilo ohms. To be exact, for this particular IC, it's about 182 kilo ohms. So just use 182 kilo ohms. It should work well. Also note that the power dissipation in the voltage divider network is given by V out squared or over the value of R plus RB. So use relative range resistor value to ensure the power dissipation is minimum to ensure it does not interfere much with the operations of the circuit. For current sensing, the sense resistor is given by the value of the current sense voltage threshold. This is set by the IC, in this case it's 1 volt, and the peak current through the MOSFET. To determine the maximum sense resistor value, 
This is given by 1 volt or over 2.2 amperes. This is the peak inductor current you calculated. This should give you a maximum resistance of 0.45 ohms. To cater for inefficiencies and to ensure the circuit operates well, the R sense should be less than this. Ensure that it's at least less than half of this. Half of 0.45 is about 0.22 ohm standard value. So select a resistance of 0.22 ohms or less than this. Also, remember the power dissipation is given by the current flowing through, which is in this case about 2.2 amperes, multiplied by the resistance. For the RC filter, for the current sense to the IC, it's selected bearing in mind that the frequency is equal to 1 all over 2 pi RC, where RC is the value of the RC filter network. Let's say R is 1 kilo ohms and the frequency is 20 kilohertz, then C will be given by 1 over 2 pi RF, where R is 1 kilo ohms and F is 20,000 hertz. This multiplied by 10 to power 9 to give you the value in nanofarads. This will give you a value of 8 nanofarads. So choose C as the net standard value of 8.2 nanofarads and R will set it to 1 kilo ohms. And back to the circuit, you can see finally the voltage settles to about 48 volts. The regulation is within plus or minus half a volt, so the circuit works well. Here the value for the inductor is 150 microhenries, the capacitor is at 352 microfarads, the resistor divider network is made up of R4 and R5, 10 kilo ohms and 180 kilo ohms, the load is 48 ohms, the MOSFET I chose is IRF540, current sense resistor is 0 0.15 ohms, R2 is 1 kilo ohms, the filter has a capacitance in degree of 8.2 nanofarads, the timing resistor is about 10 kilo ohms, the timing capacitor is 8.2 nanofarads, for the compensation pin connected to ground through a 0.1 microfarads capacitor as shown. The AC pinout is as shown, pin 7 is VCC, pin 8 is VREF, 4 is RTCT, 1 is compensation, 3 is the current sense pin, 2 is the footage feedback pin, 5 is ground, and 6 is the output. This drives the MOSFET. The circuit works well, and for the oscilloscope shots, you can see they are shown. When the voltage gets past 48 volts, the AC stops switching, and once the voltage falls below 48 volts, the AC begins switching again to compensate. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have enjoyed this video. If so, make sure to give it a like, share with your friends, subscribe to my channel, check out some of my other videos, have a nice time, and I'll see you in the next video.